Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Sinner Report Sunday Night Blues and Nonsense. No, I'm just kidding. It's Sunday Night News and Nonsense. Although, maybe we could have B.B. King on the show, Spatch. You, you think there's a chance of that happening? I, uh, I think you have better chance of us. <laughs> Hitting the lottery, yeah, right, right. <laughs> selling, selling ice cubes in uh, the Antarctic. Yes, thank you for the vote of confidence. Uh, this is another, so shut up, but this is another report. Is this at a number 11? I lost track. I think it is. I think you're getting senile in your old age, Toss, today. Uh, not yet, but uh, yeah. anyway. You, you yep. know, they say a touch of gray adds an air of uh, distinction, but too much gray is extinction. Ah, thanks. I feel so much better. Well, on that note, folks, thank you for listening. We'll catch you next time. Goodbye. Can anybody say midlife crisis? You yeah. wake up one day and you realize you have less days ahead of you than you have behind you. Oh! Uh, boy, this this is supposed to be funny and nonsensical. Come on. <laughs> I think it is number... Uh, I think... Uh, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're we're having the we're having the Geritol hour today, folks. Yes, uh, uh, today on the Hallmark uh, Geritol <laughs> hour. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I just had a thought. There's a Sunday night news and nonsense. This is what this is what this is, right? Well, we yeah. could do this like like every night. There's the Monday night, the Tuesday night, the Minner report, the Twinner report, the Winner report. Oh no! Oh no! 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 It's just no, a thought. No. But, okay, fine, fine, fine. I, a, a, I. You know, I have a certain amount of time I allot myself to be zany every day. Well, never mind. That's the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Spatchy, why don't you get us started, my man? Hey, did you know that Samsung joins Linux Foundation as a platinum member and grabs a seat on the board? Now, we were just talking about Samsung with their, yeah. uh, that they should make the, uh, you know, the the um, electric shaver slash <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. wristwatch or something oh, like that. Oh, wait, that. <laughs> that, that was Sony. Wait a minute, that was Sony, but go Oh, ahead. that was Sony. Okay, well, Samsung is uh, one of the most aggressive companies emerging as yes. a leading GNU Linux player. Wow. And the company has become uh, the number one mobile player thanks to Android. Wow. And the company is also leading Google's attempt to bring Linux-powered Chromebooks and Chromebox to the market. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to start seeing Linux on the store shelves. How do you like that? Do you think this nice. is the year of the Linux desktop? It very well could be. The company is also partnering with Intel in its Linux-powered Moblin initiative as it replaced Nokia. Apple's arch rival is now looking for a bigger role in the Linux world. Wonderful news. I would say so. You know, this, you know, for the last 12 years, is this the year of the Linux desktop? Is this the year, you know, like on a mass marketing scale? I don't know. You know, time will tell. I know Zorin last year had made an announcement about a Zorin Linux desktop dual boot, and they ran into some kind of issues. But I think it's great if it really pans out. Wonderful. So we'll, well see. If you, it, well, if you listen to uh, one, I had a Zoo Crew podcast on this, and we've already come to the conclusion that the year of the Linux desktop has come and gone. Actually, you know, the year of the Linux desktop oh. is the year when you decide to try Linux and stick with it. Oh, because it sounds like it came and went, like they sold out so fast I couldn't catch one or something. Well, well no, yeah, yeah. well, actually it did because you'll remember when uh, netbooks first came out and they were the biggest yeah. cracks and everything and they yes. all shipped with Linux on them. Right. Microsoft had a big tissy-tissy fit yes. and so they released a, a service pack three for Windows right. XP. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so right. That, yeah. Because they did not have an operating system that they could throw on it, and obviously Vista was too much of a resource. Yeah, on, yeah. On yeah, you're net. right. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. And you know what? They're not getting any faster. They're still selling netbooks, and it seems like they still have, you know, they still have the same processor speed on them. I like guess a, there's like, still a market for that, so why yeah, not? Yeah. yeah. Well, people still use them and that sort of thing, and that's a yes. wonderful thing. I mean, I had a I had a netbook, but you know what? Those things, <laughs> they, they don't last very long. Oh. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, I the last netbook I had, I mean, the battery's already dead on it. I mean, it still works, but you know. Yeah, but I think after like six or seven spills of coffee, doesn't that like fry the you know the battery and stuff like that? But. You know. Yeah, yeah. You don't take the netbook into the bathtub with you. <laughs> so that's been the problem with all these folks. My goodness. But <laughs> well, what you got? 
All right. Facebook, remember two weeks ago or so we had we, we did a center report with uh, with IG and we talked about Facebook went public yeah. and the millions and millions of dollars that actually people lost. Uh, it went from like forty dollars a share down to like two point five cents or something, but no. Um, really? Apparently it went down to like twenty dollars <laughs> a share, like half. Yeah, really? And apparently there was some kind of uh, glitch in the system, some kind of shenanigans, whatever you want to call it. So Nasdaq you know, part of Wall Street is is going to pay back investors forty million dollars for the loss of their money. Now I'm thinking, wait a minute, this isn't this how Wall Street works, winners and losers. Mm -hmm. So why should they pay back anything? I mean, I I don't I, know. I agree. I mean, if well, it was I you and I, like, and we lost it, we would get back maybe like a half a cup of coffee. But uh, yeah, yeah. Well. I just found it somewhat like. It doesn't make any sense, but hey, I, I'm not a Wall Street type. But but that's all I had on Facebook. I just thought it seemed kind of strange. So you know, I think I think where Facebook went wrong is they should have talked to Martha Stewart about um, insider <laughs> trading tips. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, she paid. Her <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Welcome to Living with Martha Stewart. Now, see the little Facebook <laughs> logo on my dishes. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, you know, with the little with the little uh, taffeta and ruffles uh, all around. Yeah, them. right. You see yeah. Zuckerberg. Face on the towels, you know. It's like, sure, let me wipe my, you know, with his face, but no, but uh, yeah, that that's just like you know, cooking with Julia Childs and Julia, Julia Child, Child. Yeah, is I'm, standing I'm, over is standing over Martha Stewart's shoulder and ha making her yeah. do all the cooking now. <laughs> Talking about a comedy act, yeah, but uh, <laughs> all right, well, let me move on to the next one iPhone, uh, people who. Can't afford a contract? You can now, I guess, this month or next month. Anyway, soon you'll be able to buy a prepaid iPhone without the uh, the extension or without having to buy a contract, and it would only cost you about six hundred forty nine dollars upfront. But you can have your very own prepaid iPhone. Now, I think the monthly cost will be less, considerably be less, but it's still like seven hundred smacks upfront. Um, so I don't know. Is that a good deal? What do you say? Uh, I don't know. Sony, if you're listening, here's 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 an idea here, and you can have this advice for free: the Sony prepaid iPhone smartwatch for two hundred bucks. There you go, guys. That'll sell. You see, you see, all of these prepaid plans are scams in some way or another. I mean, you know, um. <sighs> You well, know, I mean, for, I don't for, know. For, about for, for, yeah. Well, well, I mean, it's highway robbery. I mean, I mean, you buy you buy a twenty dollar uh, refill airtime card, and what do you get? About an hour of talk time on it. I guess it depends. That, what you know, you, I guess it depends what you're looking for. I mean, you know, you can get like, uh, I guess you can get like, you know, certain monthly, not a con, but like monthly service, so like unlimited for like. You know, fifty, fifty-five a month, and and no contracts. You can cancel any time. Yeah. So I guess it's kind of fair. You're if, better off going to somebody like Boost Mobile. Mobile. Stay away from Metro piece of shiznits. But uh, oh, that's what you have you, down there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Piece well, Metro. Me, yeah, Metro <laughs> okay. PCS is everywhere. But right. yeah, I call them piece of shiznits. But at any right. rate, um, Boost Mobile has a good deal. For, yeah. uh, if you buy their cheapest phone uh -huh. for I think it's like forty bucks a month, you get unlimited talk and text. Uh -huh. And I mean, you know, um, and the thing is, yeah, you buy one of these prepaid phones and you spend and you spend forty bucks, and you're lucky to get two hours worth of talk, two uh -huh. or three hours, yeah, two, three, yeah. maybe four hours of talk time, yeah. and. And then uh, every time you send a text message, you know, that comes off of your little yeah. balance and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And it tells you, you only have 10 cents left. <laughs> well, know? you know what? Read the fine print, read the brochure, and if, and ask questions. That's prob But that's probably the general good advice for anything that you want. Exactly, about. exactly. So, people people yeah. don't want to sit down and read it, read, read the licensing, though, that, that accompanies them. And that sort of, you know, they, spend they, the little time, read they, and they, ask yeah. Them. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they think they're getting a deal. Okay, this is cheap, you know, this, yeah, it, yeah, you know, th this is cheap, or, but they're not realizing that they're, that they're really not or ask ask a name who has it or someone, see what they said. That's probably probably the best advice at all. That's a that's the best thing to do. Is, yeah. Ask all around, right. ask around, ask around. While we're on the subject of phones. Yes. Okay, 
Google acquires Quick Office, which uh, crushes Microsoft Office streams, and I'll explain further. While Microsoft is planning to bring its Office suite to Android and iOS after repeated failed attempts in the mobile OS market and sinking Nokia's boat, <laughs> Google acquired Quick Office. The mm -hmm. best mobile office suite for Android and iOS devices. With mm. this acquisition, Google now has an offline office suite for Android and iOS to compete mm. with Microsoft Office. So I think we're starting to see some major changes in the uh, tech world uh, just this year alone. Microsoft is going to be inundated with uh, competition this time around where yes. they used to, you know, where, where they literally had the market cornered everywhere. Now, all these mm. companies are rising up and they're going to be putting up a fight. Can Microsoft, um, can Microsoft come out ahead on this one? I don't know. You know what? Technology, the, the nature of today's technology moves really, it seems, at light speed and companies need to catch up or if not catch up, you know, continue what you're doing if you're on a good roll, like Apple. Give, mm -hmm. I, give, I give credit, you know, where credit is due. But yeah, I mean, competition in the end is probably best for everybody. I mean, for all consumers anyway. Yeah. So, you know. While we're on the subject of uh, Microsoft, yeah. We all know about the UEFI secure boot solution that uh -huh. they are offering and that sort of thing. And yeah. it's caused a major uproar yes. in the Linux world because now everybody's afraid they're not going to be able to boot their uh, yes. Linux distributions. Yes. And of course, I am talking the unified extensible firmware interface. Yeah. And it's a major worry for the GNU Linux user as it will make it impossible for them to install their favorite distro on hardware with secure boot. Now, it appears that Red Hat has come up with a solution. Matthew Garrett posted on a blog about Red Hat's solution, which met with controversy. Tim has tried to explain things, removing any doubts one might have in order to ensure uncompromised system. Yes. While Microsoft will provide keys for Windows, Red Hat will provide keys for Red Hat Enterprise and Fedora. Hmm. Now, this is not a Fedora-only solution, though. Any distributions, oh. including Ubuntu, can participate at a nominal cost of 99 U.S. dollars. Okay. That is not per distribution or operating system. I mean, all Ubuntu has to pay is $99. Yeah. And then their distribution that they're releasing for free uh, will have this solution, and it will allow them to register their own keys. And uh, now... The end users don't have to pay. So if you compile your own kernels and that kernels and that sort of thing, you will not have to pay any money. Hmm. Uh, uh, yeah. What will happen is uh, you will just you will just register and they will uh, and they will go ahead and give you the key that you need. Okay. So um, uh, according to this article that I am reading here on uh, MokTware.com, lots of really great tech news on here. Yeah. I have heard of the website. As far as the UF, the UEFI or UFI, as I call it, I'll I'll pass judgment to the final until uh, the stuff's on the market. But if if it's really going to be locked out, then I'm calling the UFI the goofy because it just, <laughs> <laughs> it's just the, it's the Microsoft goofy <laughs> system, right? And that look, I like Microsoft, and I'll defend them seven days a week, but but. Come the last day of the week, Sunday night, and it's and it really has that, and it has that, and it and it deters or really locks us out. Then I'm not for that. Look, I can understand them doing that to the point where they don't want mom and pop people messing with the system, messing it up, and then thinking that they got a bad computer. Just stick with what works, because I think Apple has had that for a while. Mm -hmm. Yes, they have uh, had. They've had EFI. Ah. Uh, they have had EFI, 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 yes. Here, EFI, but no. Um, <laughs> I, so I understand the logic, and I'm with them. I think a little bit, but I'll wait till the end till I pass final judgment. Just now, it. Yeah, but. I will say the UF UEFI. It does sound like something that um, that um, really people could use. I mean, you know, especially where you have a computer as vulnerable as Windows. Yes. But yes. um, the thing is, at the end of the day, as a smart consumer myself, and I know I'm buying a new computer sometime this yeah. year, I'm going to make sure that the computer that I buy um, has the ability to turn off the secure boot features. I so just I thought of an on-off switch yeah, for that. Uh, yes. uh, you know, yeah. Because that's exactly what I do. I... Um, 
you know, uh, you know, when I'm out shopping around and that sort of thing, um, I always let the salespeople know when I'm looking at the computer and that sort of thing. They ask yeah. if I want all these extra software packages. Yes. No. The first thing I'm going to do when I take it home is I'm going to say no to the end user license agreement. Yeah. Have send a copy to the manufacturer and letting them know this so I can get a refund, a partial refund on it. And yeah. I'm putting yeah. Linux on the computer. Mm -hmm. Although to be fair, as far as Windows 7 goes, there's nothing wrong with that. No, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. nothing's wrong with it. I'm, I'm talking about what you right now. Windows 8 that. That's the, that's to be determined. But Windows Seven, uh -huh. there's nothing wrong with keeping that and what you pay for the computer. Windows Seven is stable. We've agreed. It's 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 good. It's fine. And if you dual boot like me, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. So there. Yeah. You. Yeah. Yeah. What else you got? All right. Finally, Toshiba is coming out or just came out with the new ice cream sandwich uh, Android tablet. I think it's called the Excite. Uh, <laughs> the Toshiba Excite. It's a 7.7 .7 inch tablet which is kind of unusual 7.7 .7. that sounds like a reading on the Richter scale um, you know, but <laughs> well, well wait wait maybe there's a built-in vibration function in the tablet. No. <laughs> at a rate of 7.7 .7. but it, but anyway you know, kind of like your cell phone but uh, anyway what was I say yes it's 7.7 .7 ice cream sandwich 4.0 which is which mm -hmm. is terrific and it's a nice looking operating system too. I had a chance to look oh, at cool. those. Very nice. Cool. And it's Toshiba Toshiba, so I'm sure it's a nice product. Now, but here's uh -huh. the thing. It doesn't have HDMI out. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It has the camera is like on the I think it's on the top right hand corner. It's not centered. That doesn't mm -hmm. make any sense. And the megapixel is like five or less. That's not a lot. But well, that's all you need, though, to take regular photos. I mean, you know, okay, I mean, okay. yeah. one and a half megapixels is more than enough to take a standard size photograph. When you're when you're talking about a five megapixel picture, though, yeah. you're talking about something uh, large enough to be that big, ugly painting you have in the middle okay. of the living room. All right, but here's here's <laughs> why here's why I I I respectfully don't agree, sir. <laughs> it's got to run the seven point inch. 7 point inch, yeah, 7.7 .7 inch Android tablet is, tablet is going to run 500 smacks. Uh, can't you get 10 inches for like the same price with a better camera and HDMI yeah. out? Yeah. I want to say Toshiba, baby. Have you heard of HP WebOS last year? It you went know, from what? like, yeah, I mean, come on. Yeah. I really don't. I, I, I really don't trust the Toshiba brand. I mean, oh. um, in my experience with Toshiba, you know their hard, their quality control could be better. I mean, I mean, I, some of their well, stuff is good, but the thing is, you know, I've I've run into a number of their products that you know just fizzle out. You know, I I bought. They're, they're uh, not known for their longevity. They're just known for mm -hmm. a value price. And let's face it, you get what you pay for mm -hmm. nowadays. You know, um, now. Um, for the five hundred dollar price tag, what kind of a warranty can you expect to get out of this thing? Are they only giving you one year warranty? That's my they, guess. I don't have the problem with the standard warranty. I mean, I know what you, what you're getting. I don't have a problem with the with the brand. I've had good luck in the past with stuff I've bought. The one year warranty, I think it's that standard throughout throughout the industry. Yeah. But it's five hundred dollars. You can buy a regular. 10 inch, I think, Toshiba Android tablet for like $400 if you can still You can buy a nice laptop for $500. Yeah, and it comes with the keyboard too. But, uh, exactly. So it's like this to me doesn't make any sense. I smell another fire sale for like $99. And once the Google yeah, tab. It, it, yeah, it, yeah it, so you see what I mean? You know, once, yeah, so yeah. That this is just one of those things you wait until uh, it doesn't sell and it ends up in the bargain bins. Yeah, just go to your local flea market and you can find it for like a buck, <laughs> and, buck on no. the quarter next to the apples, you know, yeah. But, but, uh, but yeah, uh, that or go on eBay and buy them. Yeah, yes. I know what you're Yeah. Yeah, when I first heard the price, I'm like, oh, geez, here we go again. But, um, mm -hmm. well, that's all I have. So, what about you? Um, that's all I have, too, uh, other than... Um, other than I've got uh, more goodies uh, heading up. Um, for those who haven't seen any updates, uh, I've cool. been on a blitz this weekend yeah, for sure. with videos on my channel and that sort of thing. And um, and I figured out that um, the problem I was having with monetization on YouTube um, was corrected. 
by my uh, writing a really nice and rather lengthy um, thing that I now include with my videos, and I use the old video uploader to yes. my uh, yes. rights. And now I haven't received a letter nice. and that sort of thing, and I'm looking to connect with a uh, network to get full partnership on YouTube because that I found out after doing some research that the only way th that YouTube partners now the only way that you're going to get full branding options is if you partner with a network so I'm out network shopping right now and hmm. on that offers the highest payout and uh, once oh. I get uh, c connected with a the network then of course we'll start seeing uh, all kinds of really cool things happening hmm. Linux well, well, and yeah. I've already started to, uh, as I'm counting down to my 300th episode I've already given the show a new look and uh, there's a lot more good stuff headed in your way. After the 300th episode, I'm going to be tapering off of the Linux reviews. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing a lot more in multimedia and um, maybe some games and stuff too. Okay. But I'm going to start doing a little, a few more things that I enjoy doing more so than, you know, things I Why not? So yeah, 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 we'll have to we'll have to discuss as soon as we get off the air. Discuss more of that networking thing because I want to buy my million shares of Facebook when it goes down to like forty nine cents. <laughs> I think it'll be a good deal. So yeah. But something else you might want to keep an eye out on. I will have some videos coming up where I'm going to be showing you how to get the most out of uh, Caden Live to uh -huh. uh, do some uh, to do some really cool special effects. I'm running the latest Caden Live for the sure. fire buttons built in. Sure. And, um, yeah. So uh, I've got. I've I've got some good stuff coming up here. Nice. Want to miss, especially. That's, yeah, sounds wonderful. Yeah. yeah, I even figured out how to cut my rendering time in Caden. Wow. I've down to one fourth of the time. Wow, folks, it's a wonderful, wonderful life. Wait, wait, that was a movie, but. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. well, the thing is, the thing is, it does come at a cost. Ah. Um, larger file sizes but you know what ah. i'd much rather have the shorter rendering rendering time and a yes. giant file size because i don't care how long it takes for a video to upload my cpu is not burning but when i'm editing a mm. video or you know rendering a video and that sort of thing sure yeah that takes forever and i also figured out some other really hot tips for getting faster renders out of blender so all good right stuff. Folks, Coming. Spatry is the new Blender master. Now, he he masters well, he, the blending he, he, access. He blends like Maxwell House Folgers all in one to create. No, oh, wait a minute, that's coffee. Never mind. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to create his energy drinks, you know. Total OS today. Get off of my Skype. Goodbye. <laughs>